Mara Thomas, Editor-in-Chief of UrbanHealthToday.com, part of the DocWire family of medical news sites. And I want to thank you for tuning in to Urban Health Weekly. Our goal each week is to keep you informed of the latest in health and medical news right from today's headlines. It's time to empower yourself with open conversations about your medical care with news that matters to you. So are you ready? Let's get started. We were about to start talking about um, this new ultrasound scan that can accurately detect prostate cancer. That's a big win for the prostate uh, diagnosis. An ultrasound scan can be used to detect cases of prostate cancer, according to new research. Researchers at Imperial College London, University College London, and Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust have found that a new type of ultrasound scan can diagnose most prostate cancer cases with good accuracy in a clinical trial involving 370 men. The ultrasound scans missed only 4.3% more clinically important prostate cancer cases, that is cancer that should be treated rather than monitored, compared to MRI scans currently used to detect prostate cancer. MRI scans are expensive and time consuming. The team believes that an ultrasound scan should be used as a first test in community healthcare setting in low and middle income countries which do not have easy access to high quality MRI scans. They say it could be used in combination with current MRI scans to maximize cancer detection. The study is published in Lancet Oncology. Prostate cancer develops slowly and symptoms such as the blood in the urine do not appear until the disease has developed. It usually affects men over 50 and often men with a family history of the disease. Black men are disproportionately impacted by the disease and deaths from prostate cancer have now overtaken those from breast cancer. One of the main methods to diagnose prostate cancer is a special type of MRI scan called a multi-parametric MRI or MPMRI scan which helps doctors see if there's any cancer inside the prostate and how quickly the cancer is likely to grow. However, the scan takes 40 minutes and costs 350 to 450 pounds, which is about the, what, five to 600 US dollars? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The new study looked at the use of a different kind of imaging called multi-parametric ultrasound or MPUSS, which uses sound waves to look at the prostate. The test involves the use of a probe called the transducer to make the images of the prostate. It is placed into the rectum and it sends out sound waves that bounce off organs and other structures. These are then made into pictures of the organs. Okay, I'm reading this and I think this is great for men, mm -hmm. um, but I'm kind of hating because I can't believe there's all this technology for the prostate, but it's slow moving disease, yet science still hasn't come up with a way to survey women's ovaries. This is pure unadulterated horseradish, honestly. Like I, that, that, by the way, this is not to mitigate, you know, the suffering of those who have prostate cancer. It's still cancer and cancer is deadly, period. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm just frustrated that women's health is not considered big enough business for pharma or imaging. That's, and, and we're dying. Like, like yeah. ovarian cancer is a very quick, aggressive moving cancer and no one has come up with anything for ovarian cancer, nothing. No sort of like peritoneal tests, nothing. Thoughts? I still don't know why they don't have anything for ovarian cancer, but did you know that it's, they're saying it's the most common, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in Britain. Did you know that? I did not know that. And there are, there are a lot more diagnoses uh, of later stage prostate cancer after the pandemic because of, you know, lack of screening. So now there are more cases than should have been of prostate cancer. And of course, this is going to create pressure on the lower socioeconomic rungs because they have the least access, right? But are they going to be able to have access to multi-parametric ultrasound? I don't know. Well, it's an exciting time for uh, for imaging for prostate cancer, that's for sure. That's always exciting. They have all kinds of tricks and, and so forth. And again, I'm not downplaying it. I'm just kind of hating a little because it's yeah. like, where's the stuff for the ovarian. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the where where's the, the technology for ovarian? That's all. Lou. You know, I, I've been Jones to say something here. Please. Ah. First of all, thank God they have all that stuff uh, out there. Uh, uh, ready for prostate cancer. Again, I'm not downplaying it or, or making a joke out of it. 
but, neither uh, am but I. But I am kind of, it, it makes me feel kind of good. Of course. That there's, there's an easy blood exam. I don't have to go get, uh, you know, uh, violated or, you know, ultrasound. Oh, no, no, this is violating. This goes up well, your that, butt. That's violating, but. But it detects it earlier too. But, but at the end of the day, usually, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the blood exams, uh, the PSA and all that, that are very, very accurate. And, and uh, thank God that uh, men have that. Uh, and we don't have to wait for symptoms. I think that was game changing when those, uh, those diagnostics came out, the PSA and, and all that, because, you know, the symptoms could be just old age or you, you're sitting too long or you're eating the wrong food. You know, you, you know, you just, you know. Who, who Are you monitors. saying that 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 the PSA, the prostate specific antigen, just kind of marinates? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that 20, 30 years ago, they didn't have this test. Oh, okay. And the, the fact that it's not an invasive test, it could be done as part of your routine blood work, much like your cholesterol. You know, you get it at the same time you get your cholesterol and all that. If you if you pay the extra thirty bucks, or if your insurance, the, you know, decides they like you. Um, it's an amazing test, uh, amazingly accurate. And once but you... the problem with the with the the PSA is that you're not going to get an answer until the stuff is already in your blood, right? This uh, detects it before it gets out into earlier. your blood. Ah. A little earlier, but it's, early it's, is it's early. Early slow, makes a huge difference. It's such a slow moving cancer that. Um, mm hmm. And once you start, you know, once you start treating it, you know, a lot of other things can go wrong. So at the end of the day, I, I, me personally, I'm going to wait for the PSA. But, you know, if, if, if let's say my father had had it, which he, you know, thank God he hasn't, even though the rest of my family, everybody gets it except for my dad. Um, so at the end of the day, if I had a lot of cancer in the family running, I think I, I would be a little bit more aggressive about it about screen, but I, I just uh, knock on wood and, and, and hopefully all is fine. But it's good that it's out there. I'm not gonna say that that's not a good thing. It's good that it's out there and I'm glad. And ladies- It's just not for you. <laughs> you that's kind of what you're saying. It'll be for me if I see my PSA no, start you just said, out. But, that, but then it's too late. The PSA is much later diagnosis than the, the, uh, the MPUSS. Well, the PSA goes from zero to seven. Okay. Okay. You know, right now mine is 0 0.3, I'll, I'll, I'll say, which is great. You know, if I saw it go to two, I'd say, oh my God, I've gone from but, 0 0.3. Uh, to because you know your baseline too. Because I know my baseline. I've been doing it for a few years. I've never had and you know, it varies a little bit, but I've never had one that didn't start with a zero point something. So if that thing all of a sudden became two point something, it's not recommended that I get anything and probably insurance will fight me on it and say, well, we don't recommend even doing any ultrasound or anything until you get a five. My feeling is if I've got- But, by zero, then, but, but, then, but then the disease is in your bloodstream. Like what part of that are you no, missing? No, I get it. But if, if I go from a zero to a two- Don't then, you want to know before it gets there? I, don't, I want to know- Not if it, it goes, means sticking something up your butt. Is that what we're, we're, we're saying? We're, 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 we're getting we're, personal here. You no, know? no, no. This is not getting personal. You're, you keep talking about the PSA. The article is about the ultrasound and you keep talking about the PSA, which is the blood test. Yes. So basically what you're saying is let the disease flood my blood and then uh, when it's in my blood and they detect it, then I'll do something about it. I don't want to do something earlier because that means that they have to stick this MPUSS up my tush. But why? Why is it gonna... Because early detection saves lives. How about I, I take the PSA? I'm happy with the PSA. I, I'm at zero. <sighs> You know, I, I'm just saying, if I go- Do you understand the, what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying, right? I understand what you're okay, saying. Okay, so you're you're making another no, argument. You, when the, you like to go just to find out. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't- Because I, early detection saves lives. No, listen, I, I, don't, I don't go to manholes or, or, or sewers and look for clowns and kill a clown. That's ridiculous. You know? I, 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 oh, I don't my God, God whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're comparing this to a, to a thing, to Stephen King. Like, are you for real? No, I'm just saying that if I- you You're basically saying, if I take you are test, saying that you would rather wait 
for a later stage diagnosis because it's slow moving what rather than finding out earlier. Is, it is a later stage diagnosis if it's in your blood. It, I'm just saying that once I see, if I were to see that my lines are fine, then I would do it. I mean, if I have no cholesterol and I have no BP, no high BP and all that, I, I don't know if I'm going to start looking at the ordering of the artery tests and all that. I, I'm just not. I'm not telling people not to do it. You're I, kind of telling people not to do it. No, I'm just saying that me personally, as long as the blood work works, as long as I'm asymptomatic, as long so as... So basically you're saying thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to know early. What if you? Oh, what if it were definitely covered by insurance? Would that change anything? I don't think he cares about that. Okay. He cares. He care. All he cares about is he doesn't want. Um, he doesn't want something up his tush. Oh my god! <laughs> that went really very specific. <laughs> well, that's what it is. It goes in your rectum. It's a probe. He doesn't want the probe to go in his rectum to take a look at his prostate to see if there's any early signs, even though it runs in his family. Mm. So basically you're going on the record saying, thanks, but no thanks. Pretty much. Okay. But I will, right. it's a good thing. And I would say that if I saw my PSA start inching up, I, I might- there, there, would be no, there would be no point in doing it then. No, you know, they tell you not even to get anything checked until you hit a five. Uh, I'm not they don't tell you five. not to get anything checked until you, you just no. made that in your mind. Oh you just made that up in your mind. Like, okay, well, five is where you, we start looking seriously at things. Then I'll take some real action. But you're, that's not like a clinical, who told you that? So in other words, no one told him that. He just told himself that. He gave him <laughs> it five. sounded good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I read it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to tell me where you read that. You I'll had me find you out. had me fooled for a moment there. <laughs> I don't want to sit here and do research the rest of the show. This show is nothing but meeting research. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> move on. That's weird. I can't with him. I can't. I swear. Anyway, um, so we, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, body contouring movement with women um, who do well. So there's there's the social part of it where there's an expectation for, particularly women of color, um, to meet certain beauty standards that are not the typical American beauty standards. Um, but those standards can only really be achieved um, by some women by body contouring. So let's get into this. Um, curvy but live, the Latina dilemma. This was an article from um, Refinery29, Somos. Mm -hmm. Entering our homes, whether it's through music videos or casual familiar conversations, the hourglass ideal and the fat phobia and ableism entrenched in the standard is taught to children of all genders across Latin America and Latinx USA. You know what she looks like. She's tan enough to separate herself from non-Latinx whites, but fair enough to avoid disrupting white supremacist racial hierarchies. Or as Rosie Molinari, describes in Hijas Americanas, a book exploring Latina beauty and body image, she has a curvaceous but thin body with light skin. Like Western beauty ideals, this Latina beauty standard favors whiteness and liveness, but also expects physical attributes that are often inconsistent with slim frames, large breasts, round hips and bare ears, and thick toned thighs with no trace of cellulite or stretch marks. Oh, good I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> they they, they kind of come hand in hand. For a homogenized culture that encompasses 21 different countries and territories and includes people of varying races and ethnic compositions, the idea that all bodies can or should look one way is illogical, yet the ideal and stereotype persists, and it can have devastating impacts. We are also genetically different. Our resources are different. Our access and interests are different. So creating a particular model that we encourage across the board denies us the whole multi-dimensionality of the human experience and deprives us 
of joy. Well, I'll tell you, they do a really good job on, um, on the, like Telemundo and, uh, Oh Alexander. my gosh. Cause those women all look yes. pretty much the same, except yeah. maybe blonde hair or dark, right. hair. but they all got, you know, very slender. And then they have the, the nice round boobs. And then they have the curvaceous backsides and, and hips. It's and an exaggerated, like exaggerated female form. Yes. And sometimes that, that exaggerated female form comes from, and somehow they achieve it, you know, in Brazil, that's, they, that's that's like all they turn out for their models and their, and their beauty queens. They somehow they, they got it down to a science. Thanks for listening to Urban Health Weekly today. I hope you'll join me and my friends next week so you can stay informed and inspired to take control of your health. See you next time.